the environmental factors in the diversity plan and how they influence the diversity plan is our discussion for today. So let's take a look at these environmental factors. They are social, they are economic, they're technological, they're competitive, as well as legal. So these factors, you could say, put pressure and not in a bad way on the diversity plan and the diversity planning process. So let's break them down and, and kind of look at them individually. The social factors are defined really through what we like to call a social audit, looking at the socially responsible efforts that are made and a systematic diverse assessment that's made on a regular basis. Also within social factors, we look at demographics, so age, gender, income, ethnicity, culture, uh, diversity, all the elements that we've spoken to in the previous three chapters. And then there's a code of ethics, really, that speaks to the formal statement of ethical principles, and it's kind of a rules of the road of conduct for us and when we look at social factors. If we shift to economic factors that influence the diversity plan, income is obviously one. The difference between discretionary and disposable income, having some money left over after your primary bills by which to do something, is a key element, if you do, into how you're going to spend or save, as well as looking at our attitude about uh, economics and the economy. How we look to spend or save is important. And then the last but not least on economic factors, our lifestyle. So our pattern of living that speaks to the totality of who we are as a person. These kind of help formulate economically how we're going to operate and are extremely important when we're starting to build that diversity plan. From a technology standpoint, we really look at things a little differently. And we look at technology when we're building our diversity plan to know how fast the pace of technology is moving and how it alters. And then what are the repercussions and the influences on consumers and their value? So how they're being marketed to and what products are being developed for them as well as the change element. So when we look at technology, it changes on a rapid, rapid basis. But from a diversity planning standpoint, one of the key differences is here is that we look at how there is a change in consumer behavior and what does that do for consumer performance. So that's a different way to look at technology uh, from that standpoint. From a competitive standpoint, we like to say that the factors are defined by brand. So out there we have a brand and the brand has similar products, similar consumers, as a similar pricing structure that helps us develop the brand within our uh, planning process. And then the industry that we operate in. The industry has similar products and a lot of competitors. Okay, And then when we look at it from a generic standpoint, which is really more on the consumer standpoint, consumers uh, perspective, we have competitors competing for the same dollars to try to get the consumer to change their behavior and make a decision. So you can see competitively it becomes uh, very difficult to get your brand leveraged in an industry where there are a lot of folks that are competing for the same dollars. And then you, uh, you kind of put an overlay to this that, okay, you've got to address it from a diversity standpoint because consumers are so different and have so many different needs and wants today, it becomes much more complex when you're building your diversity plan. So we put down some legal factors, and I think this is another place where the diversity plan is really different from other types of plans. So we've had a number of legal factors that have really helped shape um, our, our diversity landscape today in the business world. The Equality Act of 2010 uh, really looked at the, the topic of dual discrimination, and it, it strengthens some of the previous legislation that's been out there in regard to equality. The Sex Discrimination Act of 1975 and then uh, was updated in 2003 really looked at men, women, and children and, and discrimination from that standpoint. And it held employers uh, much more accountable for their activities and actions.
The Disability Discrimination Act of 2005 really uh, laid out the law to cover all activities in the public sector so there were more uh, protections in place and then promoted more equality for those with disabilities. And then the Civil Partners Act of 2005 really gave us a look at the relationship between two people of the same sex and how there's a legal recognition for that. Now, those le these legal factors are, are one of, or four of many that are out there. But I chose these because they will really help to start to build a different framework. And you can see that they've kind of run from 2003 to, to 2010, and it gives, gives you kind of insight as to where we're headed from a legal perspective as factors that influence our diversity planning overall. So that really begs to question, how do we weave these factors, these environmental factors, into our plan? Why is that so difficult when we're building a diversity plan? And then when we build that plan, do these factors really work for or against us? So think about that for a moment. Is one factor more influential than another? And that's another way to be able to, to ask uh, kind of the same question. So this begs for a uh, really kind of a, a, uh, a group case study. And this is an optional case study. You can research and look for an organization that has accomplished the following. It's found a balance in taking into consideration all the environmental factors while successfully promoting their diversity. They also have been able to create diversity opportunities both inside the company and outside their organization. And then what you would do in this case study is really develop a one-page diversity executive summary on why you chose this particular organization and what it makes or what it is that makes them stand out from their competition. Double space, a Word document, one page, again, an optional exercise, but I think it's a great prelude into development of your diversity plans overall and a good exercise to take. Of course, this exercise means that you're going to do a fair amount of research in order to be effective in it. So here are some definitions that uh, might help us from uh, our discussion in this lesson. Social factors, the demographic characteristics of the population and some of the values associated with it. Economic factors really start to look at income, expenditure, and resources that impact the cost of running a business. Technological factors, inventions and or innovations that are applied from science or engineering research. Competitive factors, looking at alternative organizations that could provide a product to satisfy a specific market need. And then legal factors that we talked about. And then from here, we're really discussion, restric discussing restrictions, state and federal, laws that are put in place on businesses to make sure that there's conformity in the marketplace. So what did we learn today? Well, we learned about these five factors, and you should start thinking about how they influence not only your diversity programs, but your overall diversity plan. So how can I use these factors to work for my organization and its efforts versus working against them. Here is your thought for the day. None of us is as smart as all of us. <laughs>